Bismillah, uh, Fatima Agal. Thank you, ladies. Oh, Fatima, Fatima, just take yourself off mute. Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen khatim al-nabiyyin abil qasim muhammad wa ala ahl baytih al-tayyabin al-tahirin al-ma'sumin al-lazhi azhab allahu ankum al-ridsa ahl al-bayti wa yutahhirakum tadhira Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala muhammad fabbishrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlu luqtatan min lithani yafqahu qawli wa fawidu amri ila allah basirun bil-ibad Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. Assalamu alaikum jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, first of all, I am I'm really humbled and embarrassed by that introduction. Um, because honestly, uh, uh, it's, it's all him. Uh, if you were to see me in my dumps and if you were to see me in my dark, Places you would know I am nothing. So we begin in the name of the one who is merciful, who is kind, who has enabled us to be in this position to experience this reality of um, the manifested world. And that is the beauty of Allah's name that that is our path to understanding him because he cannot be grasped by our limited capacity. So I'm really honored to be here and try uh, my feeble effort in, in shedding some light on two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Jabbar and Al-Qahqar. And I had a very, uh, a very clear intention in, uh, in picking out these particular names because we talk about Allah's names of love and beauty, Jamal and his, you know, his lutf and his karam. Um, but the idea is that being a being Jabbar and being Kahar are very much part of his nature. And most of us, at least I have felt the brunt of that harsh, fearful introduction to God in my childhood which a lot of us have worked hard to undo, you know, unlearn that part of God because it was overly emphasized. But at the back of our mind, there is a nag nagging question of who is the same merciful God uh, who calls himself Qahar and Jabbar. So generally, when we look at the, the names of Allah, um, Kahar and Jabbar, the general understanding is Peher is God's wrath and Jabbar is God's uh, forceful might that he uses against the disbelievers or the transgressors or etc. So that's the general understanding we, we get. Um, so I am using two books uh, today, the, the Sufi uh, view of the 99 names, Physicians of the Heart, and this beautiful book by our dearest Rosina Fozia Al-Ravi. Um, and what I like is that these books have given a completely different understanding of these names to me. So growing up, uh, we we read this dua called Dua Joshani Kabir, uh, which has a thousand names associated with Allah. And one of those names was Ya Jabira Azmal Kasir. And I never, I mean, initially as a child, I didn't know what it meant. But when I grew up, I realized that it means the one who joins broken bones. Ya Jabira Azmal Kasir. So, I, I was really intrigued to understand that this name over here, Jabir, is actually being used to join. And uh, when I went deeper into this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something really beautiful emerged. 
So going through the Quran, the word uh, Jabbar just for the statistics uh, as a way of knowledge, um, we see that the word Jabbar has been used in the Quran 10 times. All of the times, nine times out of 10, it is not used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only one time it is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, uh, I think it's Surah, Surah Al-Hashr verse 59. Yeah, the one who mends broken bones. Um, and it is used in in uh, in a verse, verse number 23 of Surah Hachar, where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is introducing himself and saying, Hu Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu al-malikul quddus al-salam al-mu'min al-muhaymin al-aziz al-jabbar al-mutakabbir subhanallahi amma yushrikun. It's a beautiful verse. Uh, there are a lot of Asma husna in there. The beauty is that he says he is Allah. Um, he is one. And then he he's talking about his beautiful names, Malik, Quddus, you know, pure, peace, salam, Mu'min, the one who is at, a, who is the instigator of peace, Muhammad, the one who completely gives you 100% protection, and then Aziz, and then Jabbar. So, it's very interesting how uh, we see the landscape of Allah's names and they, the way they give us a visual of his personality, although he can never be grasped because his essence is beyond our reach. Um, but in, in this book, the, the meaning of Al-Jabbar is the one who unites, the healer who realigns, the one who has power, the one who improves. So. The the interesting thing is that uh, Al Jabbar over here uh, says that O Jabbar, you who bring together everything broken, you who ease all difficulties, ya ya Jabra kulla kasir, waya mashala kulla asr. So it it touches your heart that you know he is the one who is so powerful. The one who is Qadir and Mutlaq, who has power over everything, and he's saying, I can mend broken bones. And you know, for my children, uh, my little toddlers, when they were growing up, uh, when they would get hurt uh, and they would be crying, I would tell them that, you know, the part of your body that breaks, uh, when it comes together, it is stronger than before. And we all know that, right? Why? Because what doesn't kill us just makes us stronger and the scars we hold are our accolades they are our trophies to say i've been there i've done that i've been through it and and the moment of triumph is that i've been there but i stood up again with the grace of my god so he is the one who puts us in the cycle of purification but then he brings us out of it triumphant every time because he promises that he won't put us through a trial which we cannot bear. So over here in the book, uh, uh, Rosina Fozia writes that when you repeat this divine name, focus on your weaknesses. Acknowledge the importance of your weaknesses and join them with your strengths. Often our weaknesses make us strong and lead us on the straight path. And this is what I really, really want to emphasize. The next part that I'm going to read, invite them, be a good host, be polite to your guests unconditionally and without distinction. That is generosity. So Rumi says that our feelings and emotions that come to us are like guests in the guest house. He has a famous poem of the guest house. And I have found most... Um, intensive moments of healing in my own journey when I have had uh, this mindfulness with, with Allah's grace to sit in the darkness and to sit with the brokenness and just surrender and say, I accept. This is what it is right now and it is perfect and I accept. And I accept that 
I'm feeling sh- ashamed. I'm, I accept that I'm feeling a lot of blame. I'm, I'm, I'm accepting that I am feeling so heavy and so burdened with guilt and shame and remorse and regret and insecurity and feeling down and depressed and all of the anxieties and the panic and to just sit with it and say, and yet I sit, and yet I sit, and yet I sit, to just melt away all the guards and come completely vulnerable and raw in front of the God who doesn't judge. And uh, subhanAllah, yes. And over here, I want to um, share an insight into the verse of Surah Fatiha, where we say Maliki Yomidin. And um, when we say Maliki Yomidin, you're saying you are the master. And Yom can be interpreted as the moment, the present moment. So you are the master of the moment of judgment. Maliki Yomidin. And I was standing in the haram of Rasulullah and I was in my Fajr Salah when this insight came. Um, and the insight was only let God be your judge. Don't let anyone else judge you. Don't let people judge you. Don't fall for their judgments. Nobody is the master of your moment of accountability to God. Let God be the only judge. If in the eyes of God, you feel clear, you feel guilt-free. If in the eyes of God, you know you had the right intention, you tried your best and you did your best. And still your actions were flawed and still, still there were mistakes that you made then let it be Allah's judgment. Leave it to him. So in that moment, whatever I was struggling with in the eyes of the world would have been a complete sin. But for me, that was the only way of respite. And I spoke to Allah and I said, Allah, you know the state of my heart. You know I can't do this right now. I don't find it in me. So you be the judge. And in that moment, I was thinking that the most Shafiq and the most Rahim and the most loving friend, even a human being, would understand that, um, yeah, she's struggling. You know, she's struggling. She doesn't have a malicious intention. It's not like she wants to be in a weak place, but she's weak right now. And in that moment, I felt this bombing feeling in my heart that okay yeah maliki omitin it's just between me and my god and i will just let him judge me and it doesn't matter what the world says and it doesn't matter how people judge me so that is the that is the god who takes our weakness and makes it our strength our brokenness our insecurities our flaws Give us the courage to come in front of the world and accept and say, you know what? I can never be perfect because the only one who's perfect is my God. So I find the courage to stand in front of you broken, incomplete, unwhole, and unable Things are out of my control. I'm truly nothing. I'm really humble. I really cannot pretend to be perfect because I'm not. I was sitting in a uh, meditation recently in the mountains and uh, we were talking about forgiveness. And one of the members in the group um, said that I feel like I'm not enough. And the meditation teacher said, it's okay, it's okay, we can just repeat the affirmation, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough. And I said, but we are not enough. We are quite imperfect. We're not enough. On our own, we can really mess up. And we do. 
And why not just be real and honest that I am not enough? I feel like I can't trust myself because I've messed up millions of times and I really cannot be trusted with myself. So our imams, when they make dua, they say that, oh Allah, don't leave me to myself. Mm. Don't leave me to myself. I'm not enough. But then I said that the, the, the sentence that gets me through a lot, which is almost a motto in my life, is with you, I'm everything. And without you, I'm nothing. So with him by our side, we can conquer the world with the right intention for the right reasons. We can do anything. But without him, nah, not a chance. Right? So Jabir is the one who collects uh, the two sides, the weakness and the strength. It is like the silver lining behind the stormy clouds. It is like the rainbow behind the storm. He's the one who puts meaning in hardships and connects us in our weak moments to our strengths. If we didn't go through our weak moments, we wouldn't be able to explore and discover the strengths we hold because it's only in moments that we fall that we have to gauge how much strength we have to stand up again. And there's a saying which says that you only fail when you give up. You don't fail when you fall. You only fail when you give up. So we don't give up because we have God by our side. Collecting our being brings us peace and our mind becomes calm and quiet. And over here, I would like to talk about the name Jabbar, the one who mends uh, and who uh, connects. Um, with the names of Allah, which are Qabiz and Basit, because Qabiz is a, Qabz is a state of constriction and Bast is a state of expansion. And within a day, if we notice how many times we go through these erratic mood swings, inner states, one minute we're crying, one minute we're joyful. And what Jabbar does is that it brings the unity between the two. It makes a rhythm, a pattern of connection between the up and the down, the dark and the light, the weak and the strong. And when that connection happens in meditative research, they say that uh, meditation uh, creates waves, uh, brain waves. And when we reach a very deep state of meditation, we call it the delta state or the theta state, I may be mistaken. So in the highest Zen state, they say that what they noticed is that both the left and the right side of the brain, they achieve a harmony and they're so well connected that now they're in full communication with each other. And this communication enables us Theta state, yes. Thank you, Zanera. So the theta state enables a harmonizing of all our faculties. So they can work together in a state where they give the best output and the best outcome. So the connections can be made between fragments of our being, fragments of our ideas. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> we observe him <clears throat> with that fragmented understanding because we see Rahman separate and we see Kahar separate and we see Jabbar separate. Much like if you look at me, I'm a mother, I'm a teacher, I'm an artist, I'm a cook, I'm, I'm and you know, I have all these different characters to me which you can see. And you'll be like, okay, who is Fatma? Fatma is a mother, Fatma is a teacher, Fatma is an artist. They're all fragmented parts of my identity. But deep within me, I don't see them as separate. I see them as one. There's a unity because all of them are me. But it's only in giving away these complete roles and identities that I can truly reach the I am, the real me within, the, the capital I within me. And so the idea of these roles coming into a sense of 
essence is when we find unity of personality, when we enter that state of Tawheed and oneness within ourselves, when the yin and the yang are reconciled together, the masculine and the feminine, the Jamal and the Jalal. And this takes me to the next name of Allah SWT, Al-Qahar, um, which is really beautiful because it comes from the word Qahara. And Qahara means that fire that burns the meat so that it brings out its juices. And uh, they say that ishq ilahi is the fire and the meat is the heart. And that ishq ilahi, which is working on the heart, is constantly bringing out the, the juices of this journey. It's constantly bringing us to that longing, that yearning that is burning within us. And so the name Al-Qahar talks about this process that is taking place on the heart of a believer, of a wayfarer, of the Salik, who is yearning to shed the layers that veil us from God and all of the ideologies, all of the personalities, all of the identities that we, the I, the ego, uh, brings up upon us and covers us up with Qahar is the name that burns it away. Qahar is the fire that burns away everything that gets in the way of me and my union with the beloved. So repeating Al-Qahar burns out the identification with our wounded eye, with the shame, with the humiliations and the insults until nothing remains in us but the divine flame. Al-Qahal overcomes all outer attachments until our true being shows itself. Every divine name finds a different echo, a different taste in the heart of the reciter and its influence is perceived according to the reciter's state. The deeper the quality can enter their heart, the more open their heart is. The stronger is the influence, the sweeter the taste. Hence the wider and deeper understanding and knowledge of the divine name. And so feel the fire and the purifying strength of Al-Qahar and use it to cleanse and bring clarity to your heart. When people who sense that they are being controlled by their lower self repeat Al-Qahar with an open, fervent heart, they're given the strength to control it. And uh, just one bit that I want to add here is that um, Al-Qahar then reminds us to learn to curb our anger, to master our appetite, and to overcome our inner enemies. Um, and so in repetition of Al-Qahar, we, we can let go of everything so that we can find the self, the self that truly unites us with the real one um, reality, the haq. So we use al-qahar to burn away all the illusions, all the whales, so that we can reach the truth. I would like to end uh, my talk. I think I've taken enough time, have I? You, uh, can can take, I... you can take as much time as you need, Fatima. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think that um, today's talk for me also reminds me of uh, one of the sayings of Hazrat Ali alayhi salam, where he says that when a calamity falls a believer, it is either a punishment or it is a challenge, a test. Mm -hmm. So in our minds, when we look at this uh, hadith, we feel like, oh, God, let my calamity be a challenge. Let me be tested like you test your wali, your awliya, your muqarrabin who are close to you, who are your favored friends, who are worthy of that test, who are worthy of that challenge. So if a calamity has befallen me, oh Allah, can you please let it be that, lest it is a, a punishment on me for something that I have done wrong. Now, the thing is that, that Allah himself is not, now we understand that Qahar and Jabbar mean so different, right? But when we talk of 
talk of calamity or azab or punishment the basic idea that we grew up with was that oh i make a mistake and then i'll be punished for it because now it's a redemption of the bad things i do and it falls into that understanding of human psyche that when we were children if we made a mistake we need to be punished for it so if you disrespect someone then okay go stand in the corner or you know i mean in the olden days we were beaten up until we accepted our mistake and we had remorse for it and we apologized for it but what we do is that in our own way in the way we are brought up we start to perceive god in the way we perceive human systems the way human beings create systems so in that time if punishment was considered okay putting people in the dungeons and torture and all of that it happens today also but how can we find proximity to god to a loving god to a merciful god why would i want to stay close to somebody who tortures why would i want to be close to somebody who's harsh and strict and um unruly i mean that's how we perceive people who torture who are heartless who are hard hearted right and so it is really important to understand that that is not who uh that is not one who is that it's just a perception that we have created of him in the human image but he's far beyond that but what is his reality is that he's really really committed and dedicated to our growth he really doesn't want us to miss out on this one opportunity this life on the manifested realm which has many benefits so in my understanding why is it so urgent for us to make the most of this opportunity if i assume that he's all loving if mm -hmm. he won't punish me then why should i be so worked up about using this opportunity to the max it's because you know when in the quran allah says that the hereafter will be a one day of this life will be 50000 years of that life i in my understanding and i can be completely wrong and please correct me i feel like time in this reality is a gift because the one day that we get here is a very potent capsule of of opportunity because what we can achieve in one day or one moment over here it's going to take 50000 years over there we don't want to be lingering on in limbo for that long because allah says khalidin fiha they will be in there forever and mystics say that it will not be forever eventually ibn arabi says that we will all meet our god like it says in the quran टोर्चर redemption or a uh um you know recuperation which almost feels like eternity if one day feels like 50000 years over there imagine what a whole lifetime of recuperation from sin from you know zulm on the nafs will feel like over there so that's why this is like a super super dose it's like a super dose of fast effective uh concentrated time here where we can achieve quick results you know allah subhanahu wa taala doesn't even write our sins until many hours later because he's waiting for the servant to return that's his mercy so my point here is that when hazrat ali is saying that when a calamity befalls you gauge it i feel like he's also reminding us of our free will and our power to choose and when a difficult situation comes in our life i actually in the present moment ibn al waqt i am ibn al waqt i am the son of time i am 
the writer i am the pen i am the tablet i am the one in the present moment who can decide my own destiny and in that moment i can choose whether this difficult situation in my life is a punishment and what is a true punishment for the heart of a believer when the heart stagnates when the heart doesn't grow when the heart doesn't read the message which is coming from the divine and so in that moment will i choose this difficulty to make me more bitter and regress and feel ungrateful and feel hurt to the level where i distance myself from god or can i choose it to grow can i choose this difficulty to now go closer to my god to grow in my soul to learn something from my mistake and then reach ascension of another level and make this opportunity of pain an opportunity for the soul to evolve so in any given moment of difficulty we hold that choice we just need to take a pause and sit with it and say what will i choose to make this and azad ali in one of his prayers says that the biggest calamity for me in dua kumail he says the biggest calamity for me will not be that you will put me into hell if i have wronged my soul but for me i will sit in hell if for, if i am put into hell allah i will so he's talking in this poetic way you know he's talking in this way of complete humility and saying that god if i even do end, end up in hell then i will cry out to you and say how did you separate yourself from me did you not love me enough to abandon me that will be my biggest complaint to you all oh that you have abandoned me that you have separated yourself from me and that will be my biggest punishment i can bear the fire of hell but i cannot bear the separation from you oh my beloved and so allah is the one who brings us together brings us into a state of unity with the beloved through his names jabbar and qahar and reminds us of the fact that how muqarrab we are he has done he says karama bani adam the bani adam has been bestowed with a very special honor they have been created in his image and the closeness that we seek comes through first understanding who he is and then secondly through emulating his qualities and so it is my invitation to myself first that as we understand more and more of his asmaul husna his beautiful names that we also try to emulate them in our character and where relationships seem to be breaking we try to use al jabbar and mend them and mm. if hearts are broken that we try to mend them and when hope is low and when darkness befalls our hearts that we remember that if a hard structure like bone can mend stronger than before then surely it is easy for my lord to mend my situation and make it better than before and keeping that hope automatically becomes a source of light for those around us so that we become the purveyors of light we become the purveyors of hope we become the purveyors where we don't talk about separation and division we talk about unity about coming together joining again becoming one again under the name of love and burn away everything that separates us from each other separates us from our goodness separates us from the desire to do good and the one thing that i want to share before i end is again taking control of our destiny in a way where we understand you know there's a lot of talk about authenticity these days i want to be authentic i don't i want to be my true self 
uh, I'm not allowed to be myself. Um, and then we, when we go inside and we say, well, you know, you know who is me? Me is doing this, doing that. I'm an, I, I'm an artist. I like color. I like this. I like that. This is how I like to dress up. This is how I like to do things. But is that really our authentic self? Or do we have it in our hands to create the masterpiece of my authentic self that I want to take with me? So do I do I just let my you know my unguarded self decide who I am? Or do I take the decision of who I am? And so what we can do is that we can sit down and say, what is my intention in this life to become? Do I want to be the one who separates? Or do I want to be the one who's Jabir, who's the Jabbar, who connects, who mends, who puts things together? So even though in, even though it's difficult and I don't want to, for example, meet my relatives, even if I don't want to mend things with somebody, yeah, that is who I am right now. But my authentic self is who I want to become. Do I want to be someone who stays angry? Do I want to be someone who doesn't forgive? The truth is right now I can't. I'm weak. I'm not able to forgive. I'm not able to mend relationships. I'm not able to let go of the anger. I'm not able to be the bigger person right now. That's fine. That's who I am now. And, and that needs kindness and compassion. And that's totally okay. We each take our own time. But remember, your authentic self is who you aspire to become. And inshallah, all of us over here are aspiring to emulate godliness, to become more and more you know, in the Quran, Allah uses this beautiful word, Sibratullah, the colors of God. We want to immerse and then, you know, dye ourselves. So there's a pun intended here that we want to die to ourselves. We want to extinguish and annihilate ourselves to the qualities of God. So the lower self dies and the bigger self can now overtake and, and overwhelm and overcome all this lower, uh, you know, impulses. And we want to die, D-Y-E, die. We want, to, we want to absorb the colors of the qualities of God. And that's our authentic self, the aspiring self, the one who wants to become God-like and hence unite with God, inshallah. Sadaqallahu al azim I would like to end with a little dua. Oh Allah, we come to you with our broken, with our shameful lack selves that are flawed. We come with our darknesses. We come with our insecurities and embarrassments. We come with our frail selves. We come completely unable to trust in ourselves. Oh Allah, we have held on to you because we have no one other than you. And will you send us away empty-handed when we have come to you with our begging bowls? The one who is the most generous and gani, the one who has all the treasures of the world and nothing can diminish whose treasures. Oh Allah, make us worthy of receiving your treasures. Oh Allah, enable us to increase our bowls and expand our sense of reception and remove all the blocks that keep us away from receiving your blessings, Ya Rabbi. Shukran Allah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Fatima. Thank you so much for so much hikmah, so much wisdom, so much light, so much beauty. Um, in, in this session today. I have um, a few things that I'd like to comment on. Uh, it's been so inspiring, so um, so moving, and there's just a 
few things. I mean, there were lots of things that came up, but I, I don't want to take up the entire time. But, you know, just coming back to um, the saying of Hazrat Ali al-Islam, when a calamity befalls you, um, we, we, we can all fall into a state of victimhood. And we've discussed this on this platform um, on other occasions. And you, you've covered um, all of it. But what I found really helped me to understand the difference between a punishment and a test, especially because um, somebody, I don't know um, her personally, but um, she texted me this morning with a huge trial and tribulation that um, she's she's currently experiencing. And I think this would be extremely helpful for her to kind of get her head around but the difference is, as you've already said, Fatima, that the punishment is going to lead you into a state of further fragmentation. It's going to lead you into a state of separation where the heart will be hardened, whether it's through ingratitude or or whatever. But it's that state of angst and agitation and um, distance, you know, the separation from your rab. That's, that's when you know the um the tribulation the trial is a punishment because now you've dis you've been even more distanced but that trial and tribulation is a test as it has been for the ambiya and and the walis and the awliya and and all of us who claim to have iman because surah bakra tells us if if you claim to have a, a faith you will be tested with loss of lives and fruits and health and and uh, that that's clear but when when you know it's a test is because you're taken back to that state of unity when you can ultimately work through those stages of suffering and arrive at a place where your heart is in a state of mutma'inna, that tranquility, that acceptance, that surrender. And it's that surrender that also brings me to um, the point about, um, you know, the, the strength being that we don't give up. Um, I will agree with every word you've uttered, uh, Fatima, but I'm not sure I'm necessarily going to agree with that because I believe that when we truly give up, when we are on our knees, on our feet, uh, and we're crawling with our limbs on the floor, um, you know, I, I get these really vivid images. And when I'm at my lowest step, I've had um, an extremely vivid image. I used to drive about an hour on a motorway um, for work a, a few years back. And I would sometimes imagine this image would come into my mind of me crawling, not even in the hard shoulder, in the third damn lane of the motorway on my on my front without use of my limbs, not even being able to stand or walk or run or anything, but being completely flat out, broken on the floor, literally on a motorway with cars in every direction. But I think it's in that state when we truly give up the control, the you know, the strength is that we um we own that. It's ours to possess. That's when we truly access the 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 power, the strength, because that's where we get the unity and that's where his the breath of the Al Qahar and the Al Jabbar will will uh, will be far more accessible. Um and then the Al Jabbar, you'll know this yourself. Many of you will be familiar with the Japanese art of uh Kiinsugi. I've probably pronounced that appallingly, but it's it's when they have broken pieces that they put together. So it'd be pottery or clay or whatever, and they put them together with them, um, whether it's a vase or a bowl or a plate, with gold infills. And what I always find interesting about this particular art form is that it's usually clay it's pieces of clay um you know uh, bowls and vases and whatever that are made of clay and of course we human beings are made of clay the quran tells us we're made of uh, uh of mud and water which is is the clay and it's really all about embracing so this comes back to al jabbar embracing our flaws and our imperfections and what i always find striking about that particular art form is that in our brokenness, in our moments of feeling scattered and shattered and fragmented, 
Um, and I broke, yes, well, I didn't break a, a, a jar of passata, a glass jar. I went shopping, it came in, put it on the counter, went to get the other bag. When I came back, that glass bottle jar had rolled off the counter, you know, the marble top, onto the floor, and it shattered across the entire kitchen in I don't know how many pieces. I was like, yeah, why have you made so much work for me? You know, the, 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 the passata had gone everywhere. But in that moment, of um, the brokenness, the scatteredness, the shatteredness, these tiny, tiny broken pieces of fragmentation where we feel in a state of separation. If we can look for the gold in those moments, what is the gold thread that um, you can use to piece everything back up? What is the lesson? What is the hikmah? What is the... Uh, the, the growth that Fatima was talking about that's necessary for you to not enter into a state of uh, hardened hearts, not to remain separated and fragmented and shattered, but to unify, but actually by learning that there's there's a lesson, there's some gold here, you know, there's platinum and gold and silver, and what, what do I want to take from the lesson in all of this? So thank you, thank you so much. And, you know, um, Every day, I try not to look at the list of who's doing what because I, I like it to be a bit of a surprise um, until the Fajr. And this morning, I knew it wasn't Al Salam. I knew that's what you were not doing, but I couldn't remember the exact names. And I was thinking uh, in my dua at Fajr, you know, what I really need is some peace right now. Um and then I came to the session and I saw it was Al-Jabbar and I thought, Ya Allah, you know, your Rabb gives you what you need, not what you want. And what I needed was Al-Jabbar, that reminder of the healing strength, um, the, the power to heal all things and, and to, to really find um, the beauty, the magic, the wonder, the joy, the, the gold in, in that feeling of um, being broken being scattered being shattered and then enduring which is what you've done through the al-kahar enduring that through the unwavering unshakable strength that he then gives you with uh, that healing power to repair and restore and then that healing power um through the fire i mean it comes back to the to the clay you know when when we burn away everything other than allah we burn the idols in our heart we um it's like a raging bushfire within the body's landscape the inner landscape of the trees and you know whatever else is there and when we're watching that raging bushfire and it dies down and you're left with the embers slowly burning eventually they're going to be reduced to ash and the ash is going to return to the earth it's going to become dust and it's going to go back to where we came from, the mud and the water and the clay. And I, I was just so blown away by um, this being the pair. It wasn't just one name. It was a pair of names that you chose. And the, the synchronicity with um, certainly that which I needed. And I think hopefully um, that which the sister who contacted me this morning also needed, uh, inshallah, um, May Allah ease her suffering and uh, and and grant her all that she needs. Um, I'm going to stop. I'm going to hand over. I'm not sure who went first, but I see two hands up, and um, I am going to defer to uh, seniority. I'm afraid Shireen. So I'm going to go to Khadija Khanum first, and then Shireen. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. <laughs> I'm in a state of um, some enlightenment because I am very, very thankful. I feel as if I've met you, Fatima Ara, and I would like to meet you. I wish I could, but I'm in England. I think, I don't know where you are, but I think you're in, are you in Pakistan? I'm not sure. Anyway, I want to say that I have been, this is one of been my great challenges this business about re reconciling opposites. I just didn't understand it. How, how, how? And 
wor- practically worrying about why is the, the Quran say on the one hand mercy and love as we were talking about yesterday and on the other hand wrath and punishment and Allah doesn't like this and Allah doesn't like this and I just felt uh, uh, the enemies of people who against Muslims they always quote you know Islam is a religion which tells you to fight, tells you to kill other people, tells you to torture and all the rest of it. How could God be like, how can you follow that? In fact, that's what people said to me when I first became Muslim. He said, how can you follow a religion that tells you you've got to kill Salman Rush? That was a long time ago. <laughs> yes, honestly. Well, satanic verse. At that time, I had no idea. I didn't. I hadn't even met, I didn't even know what Sufis were. And I had. I didn't know how to answer this, but it caused me a great deal of agonizing. And this, um, this is one thing I've been trying to do when I do my presentation. I've been trying to answer some of these, but you've done it for me. I think I'll resign. I don't need to do it anymore. <laughs> but mine is going to be from a different angle, inshallah. So I'm really ask for a blessing of Allah on you from the bottom of my heart mm-hmm. and the, for teaching us this. And you look so young as well, and I'm 84, and I feel like a child now in front of what you have said. So I, I hope that many Muslims can learn that Allah's system is not the same. The human system is not the same. And that's what the, these Taliban and these ghastly people in what are they called Daesh, that's what they've been doing. They putting their system and saying this is Allah's system. And they haven't really read everything things aright. And partly part of it is due to translation and misunderstanding and wrong tafsir. So I'll stop to somebody else wants to talk. But I hope that if an educator like you and other Muslims will counter those dreadful misinterpretations with this wisdom, which is the truth, because Allah is not a torturer. And I've always said, Allah is not a torturer. How could he be a torturer? They're the ones that are torturing, and they're saying, Allah wants us to torture people. Thank it's you. mad. Thank so you. <laughs> let us educate people. I'll stop. Thank you, Kati Johanam. Uh, Shireen, bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Fatima. You know, I, you know, I love you, Fatima. The rest of the group doesn't know that I've never met Fatima, but I've got to know her over the last few years. She was one of the biggest gifts that came to me through COVID, alhamdulillah. And I so respect you, admire you. I love your thinking. And I wanted to say that um, it was amazing what happened to me today while listening to you because I have, I'm going to be talking next week about the name Al-Fatah. And Shama knows that I have been reciting that in earnest um, for a long time now, waiting for a certain situation to open up for me. And subhanAllah, I, it came this today, a lot of it came right now, the opening for me in some of the very optimistic, positive things that you said. And I'm going to just repeat them. He said, one day is a very potent capsule of opportunity. And we are the shapers of our own destiny. And you said that, you asked the question, who is our, what is our authentic self? It's who I want to become. And you spoke about trials as, as challenges. Yes, I see that. And something just shifted in my thinking today because I realized that the solution that I'm looking for doesn't come from outside of myself. It comes from within me. And if the ruh, the ruh contains all Allah's attributes and it's, the ruh resides in our hearts, I have the potential to live those attributes. So in the solution, so that requires me to be forgiving, to let bygones be bygones, 
to move forward uh, with a clear intention um, of trying to be my authentic self, regardless of the regardless of the reactions I am met with. If those reactions are not positive or fall within my my expectations. So I thank you for this gift. Um, I thank God for you. I thank God for this group. Um, you know, listening to everybody talk every day, it somehow just penetrates my consciousness. And somehow, even you know, in my still moments, on or going to bed at night, something something clicks, something lands, and there's Al Fatta opened up for me today what I needed to hear. Subhanallah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jazakallah, Shireen, uh, Zanira, and then Faryal. Assalamu alaikum. Um, first of all, you're so beautiful, Fatma. <laughs> and I, at first I was like, um, it's just so ironic how she's so beautiful and she's a creator of beauty, she's an artist. Um, but she's doing these names where she's like, I'm not going to do the Jamali one. <laughs> I'm going to do the Jalali one. But then as you spoke, I realized that it's actually not ironic. It's very apt that you're the one to do it because art also comes from healing your brokenness and putting it, transforming it into something beautiful, which I know you do in your commitment to self-healing. And I love that someone said you have a gift, um, which you do. I mean, it's not just like your art. Um, the therapeutic way in which you speak, uh, I think... And you know how you spoke about like the theta state of mind and I'm a theta, I, I'm trained in theta healing. And one of the things we were taught was that theta, it's easier to get into the theta state of mind while you're fasting. And I just think that's so beautiful because Ramadan is supposed to be a month of healing and clearing your nuts and it's just, Allah just made it easy for us to heal. I wanted to add one thing that I did not agree with in your presentation, which when you said like, you know, you didn't agree with the teacher's affirmation that I am enough. Um, again, I think, I think you were just talking about the small I, <laughs> uh, but, but even so, even so, and I used to have like anger issues, severe anger issues, generation. <laughs> and I used to think I'm not enough, you know, God is not gonna, God does not love people who are angry. And in fact, the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, don't be angry. Um, and, you know, when you start your Sufi training, you're supposed to like not be, a, not have a single layer of moment of anger for like 60 days or whatever. Um, so it's not an ideal thing to be, but you said, you know, I'm not enough. I am imperfect. But the reality is that Allah does not really care about your imperfections. You are still enough for Allah. And that's something I realized from the story of Musa Ali Islam in the Quran. He also had anger issues. Clearly, he was raised by a narcissist around. Um, and, you know, he killed someone accidentally and Allah still loved him and accepted him. He actually took the tablet on which Allah's words were written and he threw it on the ground uh, out of anger. And Allah still accepted him and loved him. So, um, yeah, you are enough. And I, that's why I still continue to say I am enough. It's not by my own standards. Uh, and Allah does not hold us to standards of in, uh, sorry, perfection because we can't attain them. But it is about whether we embody the quality of Jabbar, whether we still, you know, get back up, like you said. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Fatima, we can't hear you. Sorry, my mic was far away. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, no, I'm, I'm just... I was just saying that I'm so grateful for you guys to to teach me and I, I and I learned so much. So really grateful to you and Zanera especially for pointing these things out. Bless you. Thank you, uh, Zanera. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Faryal, Bismillah. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair, Fatima, for such a such a beautiful share. You filled me up. You filled me up to the brim. I'm overflowing. And everything Shireen said about this resonating, I had a shift in some things for me the beginning of this year. But you've actually articulated it for me. I was processing that shift, and I, I'm in this place what you that you have talked about today. 
but you have actually articulated it for me. Does that make sense? You've actually shown me that it's mending, that Al-Jabbar is the one who's mending it and showing me how to, how to, how to find myself again, how to love myself again. And all these sessions, to be fair, every one of them has, has resonated like almost like the same message, but every day gets compounded and you've compounded it again today. SubhanAllah for so many of us, I think for all of us. Um, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah accept this from you and continue you, continue you in his, in this path, I mean, and I just wanted to share something that you um, said about time. And there's a beautiful, a beautiful narration about time because Adhar is uh, is also a name of Allah, but it's not it's not in one of the names of Allah because it doesn't it doesn't contain the meaning that reaches that you know that highest because we know that there are a lot of names of Allah outside the ninety nine names of Allah, right? So. This doesn't reach the extent of the power of those names, but Adar is also one of the names of Allah. And um, uh, what Allah, uh, there's a there's a hadith in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Indeed, Allah says, the son of Adam harms me when he abuses Adar time, and I am Adar time. I turn the night and." I turn the night and the day by my hand, I control everything. And this is what Allah says about himself, time. He created Adar and the entire universe is confined to Adar. That is, that is, that is the power behind time. And you spoke about, you know, you spoke about the love of Allah and how you don't want that to be um, the, what you narrated about. Um, I can't remember the, the 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 narration, but you know the person who is in the hellfire says, "You separated me from you, Ya Allah." There's a beautiful um, that I can tolerate anything, but don't separate me from you. And there's Imam a beautiful Ali, Imam Ali al Islam. Oh, was it Imam Ali? Ali? Oh God, yeah, yeah. that person yeah. is Imam Ali al Islam. Oh Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I missed I missed that, but Subhanallah, there is. In, there is a beautiful du'a uh, by Dawood alayhi salam, who used to say, uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has narrated this, uh, was narrated by Abu Darda, but it was by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that Dawood alayhi salam would say, Oh Allah, indeed I ask you for your love and the love of those who love you and for the action that will cause me to attain your love. Oh Allah, make your love more beloved to me than myself, my family and cold water. SubhanAllah. I'll send that to you, Shama, if you would want to share that, then you can. Sure. And, and just, you know, if we bring two ayat of the Quran, uh, just to, to, to complete what, what uh, MashaAllah Fatima has said, Allah tells us in Surah Al-An'am, uh, uh, verse 162, um, He says that, um, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَالنُّسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say, indeed, my prayer, my rites of sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, Lord of the world. And in we know in Surah Baqarah, um, after Allah, you know, uh, the beautiful ayat where Allah tells us that, and certainly we will test you of something of fear and hunger and loss and wealth of life give glad tidings to the to the sabirun who when they are afflicted with any calamity they say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un truly to allah we belong and truly to him we we shall return but what does allah say after that he says ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahma wa ulaika humul muhtadun they are those on whom are salawat, who are blessed and will be forgiven from their Lord. And they are those who receive his mercy and it is they who are the guided ones. May Allah make us of all of those. Ameen. 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 Jazakallah, ladies. That's... Um...
Bless you. <laughs> Bless you, Shamsu. High fiving Fatima. Um, incredible, incredible, beautiful, beautiful session. Um, Fatima, I wonder if you would be good enough, please, to close the session. Just, um, you know, the, the reference to Surah Hashir, uh, the um, ayahs number 18 to 24, Surah number 55, uh, 59 of Surah Hashir. If you want to just seal the session, please, with that. And then with okay. Fatiha, and I have permission from... Um, Raisa, I'm not sure if she's on right now or not, but um, she's shared with me that um, her seven-year-old son, a seven-year-old child with such tender years, um, has a very, very rare debilitating condition. And... Um, that the reference to Marhum yesterday for her brought a whole new meaning because we were talking about how um, the, the rahma that's bestowed even upon those who transition is has a whole word designated for it, for the status attributed to them, the Marhum, that they have that rahma. So I'd like to please, after Surah Hashir, uh, a Fatiha for um, Sister Raisa and Fatima KG, who's uh, going to be undergoing um, chemo, Heather Bai and um, uh, Dale and anyone else um, in need of the al the healing, restorative, uh, reparative strength, power, um, the enduring, unwavering, uh, overwhelming uh, source of uh, bringing together everything that's fractured and broken within us. So um, if you could just please complete the session and seal it with those, thank you. Um, which was the which verse did you ask me to recite the last yeah. verse? You know the Surah Hashar. Yes. The Al Jabar. I'm just asking because you already referred to it. You know the one that. Right, um, right, right. The last word. Yes. La anzal na hazal Qurana ala jabalin la raetahu. Uh, the one I was talking about was twenty three. Verse sure. twenty three. Okay. okay, well, if you want to just do that, it's not from Ayah 21. That's the one Shama is asking. If you it's, just it's, it's the power. Okay. Yeah, okay, because okay, Fatima, okay. I just want to explain to everyone it's the power of had we sent this Quran upon a mountain, you would have seen it humbled and crumbled before Allah. That's his power. So I think it would be that's why I thought maybe if we okay. could see if got it. All right. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Law anzalna hadha al-Qur'an 'ala jabl jabl ra'aytahu Thank you. 
Amen. Jazakallah. Thank you so much, Fatima. Thank you, ladies. Have a blessed Juma. I'm conscious of the time for those who have to go for Juma. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna post Surah Hashar as well as um, any others that have been sent through on the chat. Jazakallah. Thank you all. Salam alaikum. <laughs>